We're watching films on the toilet, cause that's what dads have to do. When the movie's unsuitable for your kids, then pretend you need a number two. If you need a break from your family or spouse, there's a lavatorial picture house. Watch Terminator 2 while you're sitting on the loo. Enjoy the whole of Rambo 4 with your trouts on the floor. We're watching films on the toilet. How about you? Hey, Eamon. Hello. It's almost Christmas time. It is. I've lost the kind of the childlike, magical sort of sense of anticipation mm. that's been replaced with is very much an adult just desperation to, to get to some time off. Yes. There's no delight. It's just, can I sideline my exhaustion for one day more until I can Survive. just have like more than one day off? That's really what it's about. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. No tingle, no... It's very interesting. I think, um, I know you've talked about your son's interest in Prime. It's clearly trickled down now because it's what my son wants for Christmas is Prime. <laughs> Just Prime energy drink. Unfortunately, my son's interest has waned significantly. He He doesn't care anymore. They really did create that demand by keeping supply low. I remember this... Probably this time last year, was it? We would queue up outside Asda on a Sunday morning with all these other, like, these boys in their hooded tops that he legged it through a massive Asda and they didn't have any. They hadn't put it out. <laughs> and we did this maybe two or three times. And then I ended up buying him a couple of bottles. They were like a tenner each because I just wanted him to have it for Christmas, you know. And he was so pleased. He was so pleased. Doesn't care anymore. Yeah, I think it's obviously kind of like filtered down to like the younger lads now. He is just all about it. The bigger boys lad. Nah. I don't know what they'll be into now. Knife crime? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably that. Or vaping. Yes. That's what they're into. Everyone, like Mishi, was just like, at last, a reasonable alternative to smoking <laughs> yeah. that's genuinely healthy. And now yeah. everyone's like, it's so much worse for you than smoking. It's weird, isn't it, how no one saw that inhalation of an enormous amount of smoke. No one thought that that might actually be bad for you. Is it smoke that they're inhaling or is it like, uh, you know, vapor, like mist? There's still a lot of it. Like when they breathe it out. Yeah. It's like an actual cloud mm -hmm. in the sky. And it always smells so oddly sweet. Mm. If you're going to smoke, smoke something that tastes like it's going to kill you. Like a pipe. Yeah. That was a very dad conversation, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, that'll be... I don't know if you want to use the knife crime bit, but that's quite funny. But we can just okay. do either that or vaping. And yep. then the intro would we'll just keep very... Don't worry about any of the prime stuff. We'll just go how it's no longer exciting and it's just miserable and that'll be all right are we going to keep this in the podcast your whole uh, edit i tell you what i'm <laughs> going to leave my edit notes in for the uh for the listeners you can really see how, how our process works brilliant well mm. we've gone full full meta circle that's right so there's a little insight into what goes on behind the scenes of watching films on the toilet a podcast yeah. in which two dads myself ben and eamon talk about movies don't watch or can't watch with our kids because they're scary or violent or just don't want to watch with our kids. And then we talk about them loosely uh, along with other like just dumb stuff because this is our like, this is the way we kick back, you know? We're uh, not famous enough to just have a podcast of us just chatting. No. There needs to be a reason for it to exist. So that is the ostensible reason, although... The arrogance of the famous. Yeah. Oh, people just want to hear us talk. Like, yes, but no. Do they? Do more. Well, I mean, that is essentially... We're doing the same, though, aren't we? Yeah, but we're not famous, so we're, like, punching... Up. But we're... That's worse, isn't it? We're not famous and arrogant. Arrogant enough to think that people would want to listen to us. What film are we talking about today, Eamon? We're talking about Miami Vice. Hey, so the 2006 Michael Mann joint, as uh, he himself calls them. He does. He calls it a joint, doesn't he? Um, yeah. Not the show. Not the show with Don's Johnson, mm -hmm. but the, the film adaptation, shall we say. Mm. So we'll be talking about that later. Probably 10, 15 minutes if you want to skip ahead and miss all the fun. 
you want to miss the scripted bits that uh, mm. actually have had some work put into them, then skip <laughs> through that this bit. And yeah. then listen to the, the the freestyling bit, which is genuinely improvised. Our insignificant thoughts on Miami Vice. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, right. So, Ben, correspondence. Do you have any correspondence? Do you have a correspondence, Eamon? Oh. Got a voice note. Okay. From someone. So, I'll just, uh, I'll just play it for you. Mm-hmm. For Christ's sake. I'm... <laughs> for Christ's sake. It's watching films on the toilet. It's me, Jim Ross. I've been listening to your damn podcast, and by God, it's tougher to get through than a two-dollar steak. <laughs> but you two have definitely got something. I'm pretty sure that son of a bitch, Eamon, would make a good heel. The good old boys would love what he got to say about women and immigrants. <laughs> and they'd love to see that snowflake band get broken in half. And I bet you two together in the ring would make a real slobber knocker. So stop the damn podcast and fly yourself out to WWE headquarters in Connecticut. You might get busted open by a pinata, but it'll be a whole lot of fun. Jim Ross. Oh, oh wow. man. Jim Ross. Ooh, I'm... Who doesn't work for WWE anymore, <laughs> still is drawing us in. Uh, I am delighted that made my day hearing from Jim Ross, old JR. He wants us to join... The World Wrestling Entertainment brand thing. And yeah, we, we should. As he said, I think we, we've got a good dynamic. We have. Natural enemies. Have you ever got any, any wrestling experience? I used to wrestle with my little brother in our basement. That's the same, isn't it? I once accidentally did a DDT on him for real. And it <laughs> absolutely terrified that I'd broken his neck. He drove his head into the floor. Yeah, if you're not a, a, a wrestling aficionado, DDT is when you basically get someone in a headlock and they, their head is at your waist height. And you just fall backwards onto the ground. So he's yeah. basically smashing someone's head into the ground. Excellent. I, I used to choke slam my sister onto the sofa. Nice. Like uh, The Undertaker. Uh, yeah. She she played along because we both love wrestling. Yeah. So she would like jump and I would, I would <laughs> push her down into the cushions by her neck. Oh, nice. Which is, it's fine, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Choke slamming a woman. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah. Um, Jim, you know what? We might be seeing you soon. We'll do it. Eamon, any correspondence? Yeah. I have a letter. Dear Watching Films on the Toilet. It's Mercurial Manx singer Morrissey here. Oh. I was enraged last week when I heard Eamon saying that it was not realistic for an assassin to listen to my music to get in the zone for a hit because it's all self-effacing and pessimistic. How very dare you, sir? Ooh. First, what do you really know about me? Did you know I hate immigrants? <laughs> no? Well, I do. I keep going on about how they're diluting British culture. Also... Had you heard I'm one of those mental vegans who's so hardcore they think it's good to murder someone who slaughtered an animal? (laughs) Also, I once claimed that Hitler was left-wing. When you know this, then I think you start to get the real meaning of my song lyrics. They're not introspective at all. They're bold and powerful. For example, this charming man is basically Baden Powell's Rivers of Blood speech set to the melodic jangling of Johnny Marr's guitar. (laughs) People often mistake Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now as a song about my own depression. But really, it's about how much I hate blacks. (laughs) How soon is now? About my crippling shyness? Don't make me laugh. It's actually about the Thousand Year Reich and why I think it's good and that I hope it happens again. (laughs) My next album should leave people in no doubt about my true feelings. It's a hate-filled diatribe on why Jews and Muslims are not welcome in our country. The title of the album is I'm a Lonely Self-Conscious Man. <laughs> Lots of love, Morrissey. <laughs> oh, right-wing Morrissey there. Yeah. All that yeah. stuff is true, by the way. He no, did I, say I that know. thing about Hitler. He, He's, has, uh, he has said those things. It is quite a, uh, quite a switch, isn't it? I think it's widely accepted that Morrissey is a bit of a jerk. And says really stupid things, but is undeniably a great songwriter. How much of a jerk are you willing to tolerate before you go, mm, even though I like this music, I probably can't listen to it anymore? I mean, it's very grey, Eamon, isn't it? It's very grey. I mean, basically, he's super racist, but you think that's all No, right. I don't he's think that's all right. Music I don't, I don't do. think that's all right. Implicitly no, no, sort of condoning it. I not say that. Plus, The Smiths is not just Morrissey, is it? Johnny Marr, amazing guitarist. 
other members whose names I don't know. But mm-hmm. I like his music. There's other artists whose music I'd like, I'd listen to. I wouldn't, I don't like them necessarily, hmm. you know? Kanye's a bit of a psychopath, but I like his music. Oh, yeah. I mean, in fairness, if you if you live by that rule, you couldn't listen to any good music. Exactly. Is it? You wouldn't listen, you wouldn't listen to anyone, would you? I think half of them are probably douchebags before they get famous, and then by the time yeah. they are famous, they're all douchebags. By the time they are done getting famous, yeah, they are. Do you think Chris Chris Martin is a, a douchebag? Oh, he. Uh... Am I a, am I a bit of a douchebag? Um, Bet he would say yes if you asked him. Has uh, <laughs> yeah, fame right. made you a douchebag? Do you know what? Probably it has. Yeah, yeah. No, a little bit. You know, <laughs> I <laughs> I wasn't until I until I married uh, and Gwyneth. You know, and then and then I guess I I did become a, a bit of one. But yeah, okay. This song's called Yellow. <laughs> um, I, I've never really minded him. He is... I don't find him offensive, No, Chris Martin. He's just like... He's not cool, is he? But I thought, for some reason, I thought you liked him. I, I don't dislike him. Hmm. I mean, like, Bono's notoriously a jerk, isn't he? Oh, he... Yeah. But actually, I listened to a podcast with him, and he, he came across right nicely. You just you just don't know, Eamon. You just don't no, know. No, that's because they can turn it on and off. Like, uh, I've heard Jimmy Carr say it goes so many times, like... Uh, Oh, people think uh, I'm going to be really unpleasant, and they're they're quite surprised when they find out I'm really nice in person. That's not true. <laughs> like, I've, I've spent a lot of time with him yeah. years ago, admittedly, in professional capacity, and he's not like that. He's a f- horrible. <laughs> he's, he's a terrible human being. Yeah. <laughs> but but because he's actually sort of said, oh, people think I'm I'm a, I would be horrible, but I'm not. People go, oh, that must be true because he said it. Yeah, that's smart. It's not, it's that's not really true. smart. But um, thank you, Morrissey. What suite are we talking about this week, Eamon? Let's get to the big. Let's get to the big show. Well. <laughs> That's the best theme music, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's so good. Well, it's the big show, and I would give anything to see the uh, studio singer record that, like the the recording of that. The, the, <laughs> Energy, you got to give it. Well, I bet he was well read. A really feigny neck. Yeah. Well, it's the big show. Like, yeah, like really jacked. Do you know what the next line is? I always thought, you know, sometimes when you think uh, you sing like a line to a song, which you know mm. isn't real because it's stupid, but you've sort of interpreted it. I thought it was like, well, it's the big bad show tonight. It is. Like it, that is thought, it is. It is. It can't possibly be that because that's stupid. Yeah. But that's that's the lyric. <laughs> well, it's, it's the big bad show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like he was where the guy was to me. Are you sure about this next line? Is it? Yeah. It's stupid. It makes sense. Sorry, mate. Um, just looking at these lyrics, <laughs> it's like yeah, Triple H. <laughs> it's time to play the game. We're about to play the game on the show. On they go. Oh, I don't know that right. one. You not know the Triple H? No. That was Motorhead that did the the Triple H music. Nice, yeah. That was old, old good old Lemmy. Nice. I saw Motorhead, hmm. so I'm no good. Um, they were going all over the place. Drifting here, but um, yeah, me and my sister saw Motorhead a few years ago, mm-hmm. and they came out, and Lemmy said, "I just wanted to say, unfortunately, our, our guitarist died of a heart attack a couple of days ago. <laughs> we are Motorhead." And then they just went, <laughs> they just went, and it was like, whoa, whoa Lemmy. It probably you happens are. quite often to him. Yeah, I mean, he's dead. He's long dead, but yeah. he's, he was a legend. He was a legend. The one thing I, uh, the most, you know, the, the most rock and roll thing he ever did. What, Lemmy? Yeah. Go on. Not removing those horrible moles on his face. Yeah, that is Come on, Lemmy. Mole, isn't it? You've you got the money, the money Lemmy. <laughs> oh, get rid of them. They're gross. Why would I'm you not going to say, I'm not going to get rid of them. <laughs> I'm just going to have more blood that's more Jack Daniels than blood. <laughs> I know. Anyway, you and me, big fans of Pick and Mix. Of course. We like to chat around, ch- chat around a Pick and Mix sweet. Uh, so, you know, we've done, we've done jazzies, we've done jelly babies, we've done fudge cubes, we've, we've talked about flying saucers. Amen. It's a big one. We got? It's a big one, man. It's our Christmas episode. OMG. So it is the cable. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. oh for crap's sake. 
It's got a bag full of cables. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to throw them on that bag full of cables. <laughs> that would be cool. Like a ladder's tables, ladders, and chairs match. And there's just a bag full of cables on the hook. <laughs> instead of the uh, the world championship belt. Yeah, instead of the belt or the money. <laughs> Triple H is going for the bag of cables. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and that, no, it'd be, it'd be, it was it's still one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think it was Edge. Edge went for the belt. <clears throat> and so he's just hanging from a hook, like 20 feet over the ring. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Hardy, oh no, it was Jeff Hardy and Edge speared him in mm. midair. Like, oh my God. It was amazing. Hell of a move. But if he'd had a bag of cables and he grabbed it and ripped it, Cables would have showered down into the ring. We're covered in cable dust. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, oh God. <laughs> you know, it would have been, that would have been brilliant. Mm. But anyway, phew, you caught me off guard with that. Yeah. You see it coming. We've been building Describe up to this. Describe the cable for the uh, listener that may not understand what we're talking about. <laughs> Just think about the greatest thing you've ever experienced. <sighs> and it's a sweet. It's that. It's disgraceful, isn't it? It's like a hollow tube. Outside tube is made of a mm. sort of a tacky red licorice, isn't it? Red licorice, mm. yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And then the inside, I, th- I believe, is fondant. 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 Oh, oh fondant. There's Monica Galetti from MasterChef would say fondant. A fondant. Which is kind of s- a soft. I don't know what it's made sugar, of actually. It? Fondant. It's sugar. It's just soft sugar. It's white. Just white, isn't it? <laughs> soft, soft sugar surrounded by hard, harder sugar. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's long. That's the um, the standard issue. If you're lucky, they'll do green cables as well. But in my experience, green cables seem to be uh, less and less available. I've seen blue cable. Blue cable? What's that, raspberry? Um, yeah, I mean, they all taste very similar, don't they? It's just sugar. For me, it's very much the textural... Mm. Uh, journey you go on it is it is a journey and mm. it and it lasts doesn't it they last for ages which is also they're the best really if you think about it they're the best sweet for your bag yes. because you can that you pop them in vertically nice yep. and straight you can get loads you can. Can get probably get hundreds in you bite in it's a little bit of resistance isn't exactly it? that's a it a bit of resistance you have to give it a little tug mm-hmm. and then you just do that over and over again for seemingly forever yeah, and it, it you can chew. It's chewy, so it lasts for a while. And all, it's a it is a gift that keeps on giving. What I love is there's variants of it as well. So one of them is a, a shorter, stouter cable, mm. thicker, more fondant. Yes, but the the sour sugar on the outside. Those are very stubby good. Stubby little one. The stubbies. Mm-hmm. And another one, which is um, kind of like um, stripes. Are you talking multiple fondants? Yeah, like uh, it's like st- stripes. Yeah, like if you were to do like a, a cross section of it, it would be like wedges. It's like the two have been kind of combined. And when they? you bite into those, it's an yeah. absolute delight because yeah. they kind of they can't do it justice. It's just an, the absolute best. It's so spectacular. I mean, it, I would always go back to original length though that is the first thing i put put in there i'd like to do an experiment where we tie cables together Mm. and see how much weight five or six of them could support i think they might be quite strong yeah i imagine you could um or maybe just see how what kind of force you have to apply in in order to tear the cable have you ever tried that pulling one apart is actually no mean feat Mm. have you tried no no, so. we should do that. We should do a little tug of war. Yes. That's the kind of video content <laughs> that we need. It's the kind of video content the internet is is just begging for. You, you always have to have like a really attention grabbing title on it. So it'd be me and you looking like we're about to murder each other. Yeah. And be like, he didn't think that would happen. <laughs> like, exclamation, <laughs> yes, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's just clickbait. It's just completely So clickbait. much of it. But I, I, weirdly, I really enjoy... I love those made-up titles. Because it'll be like a rest, like a recipe gif for like uh, creamy chicken. Mm. And it'd be like, um, this guy's a c- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. Uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly what you mean. Yeah. What we'd get, what I like to think is that we'd do a video before that. And then, you know, people would comment they show all the comments that came in like mm. do do this do this like 
do pulling a cable apart. And we were like, okay, <laughs> okay, we will. I, we're going to do that. Yeah, we will. We will. We're going to yeah. do that. I mean, do we even need to go through this last bit? It feels like a formality, doesn't it? But let's do it anyway. Let's, let's do it anyway. Yeah. Okay. You, it's you our, this, is our, this is our love letter to cables. It is. It is. Yeah. Eamon, hmm. I want you to <laughs> tell me... <laughs> I want you to give me a, your cable score. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell, tell me if it makes it to your essential bag. No, oh, Ben, you know the answer. It's 10 pick out of 10 mix. And bag, bag-wise? <laughs> of course, of course, of course. It's the best. It is the platonic ideal is. of the pick and mix suite. There is none There is none better. No, I think you're right. There is none better. Go on, what about you? 10 pick out of 10 mix for me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it goes goes in that bag it is the bag it is the bag it is, it's like a like a wicker basket but the bag is woven and so forth the bag shall be woven from cables i think that was in the bible mm. yeah didn't jesus say that maybe whence he turned 40 fish into cables now uh, that would be a magic trick i'd like to see that would be pretty sweet I yeah. mean, if <laughs> if he did that, I'd believe in him. Yeah. I would. It would be more impressive, wouldn't it? You know, like some people get like uh, Frank Sinatra, I think, was buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels because mm. that was like a ghost drink. Good lad. I'm going to have a big bag of uh, cables in there with me. Yeah, I mean, and if, if you happen to wake up, I'll be fine. Ah, no. I've been... Oh, oh, cables. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> be like, well, maybe I won't raise the alarm just yet. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. No, everything's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Is some someone down there? <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, false alarm. <laughs> yeah. And then just like loads of rustling. <laughs> um, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got some cables down there. <laughs> then everyone... Ripping up yeah. the earth with their hands. Ripping out chunks of you. Yeah. Get, You'd be ah, dead. get the cables. That's, that's how you died. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't that you were dead. <laughs> you got torn to pieces because yeah. your angry mob wanted your cables. Yeah. Wow. Oh, cables. Clark Cable. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a little play on <laughs> words. Uh, because, you know, in case you forgot. <laughs> is, is, <laughs> is it a play on words? Not really. Uh this is the cinema podcast, so let's get back to uh, movies yeah. and talk about Miami Bloody Vice. How did you watch it, Amy? I'll tell you how I watched it later on. How about that? That's called suspense, listener. <laughs> um, that is, yeah. <laughs> what about you? I watched it on Amazon Prime. I rented it. Same. It was yeah. only, it was like, what was it? It was three forty nine to rent, five ninety nine to buy. And I thought, I'm like, I could just buy it. But I didn't. I rented it. And I'll, and I'll tell you later on whether that was a mistake or I'm pleased about that decision. So we just keep on uh, teasing things just for the rest <laughs> yeah. of the... Uh... Yeah, I'll tell you later on. Yeah. Um, we'll do the summer we <laughs> later, later on, on. At the end, what did you drink for me so that I might do a summer we of the film in the time it takes you to do the we of the drink that you drank? Well, like Colin Farrell's character... He said, um, he goes, I'm a sucker for mojitos at one point. He did. Which, well, he's trying to say it when he's trying to look all cool, mm. which I don't think is a cool line. I'm a sucker for mojitos. Sucker for mojitos. Mm, no, it doesn't hold up. If you want to look cool, someone offers you drinks, just be like, squash. Oh, that would be cool. Give us a, give us a squash, yeah? I'm a sucker for squash. <laughs> that would be yeah. cool. Yeah, I'll bang you. <laughs> I couldn't say no. Uh, anyway, and you've got a minute and 16 seconds. All right. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Okay, three, two, one, go. So, moody Miami-based detectives Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx go undercover when a bunch of law agencies are compromised and one of their informants, his family, and a couple of FBI agents are killed by a drug cartel and a truck. Colin and Jamie pose as a couple of moody smugglers who drive really fast boats in the dark and end up unveiling a network of bad drug people. Colin Farrell gets very cosy with the Kingpin's financial advisor, Gong Li, which makes the cartel's intelligence man, John Ortiz, very cross. 
So he has Jamie Foxx's girlfriend, Naomi Harris, kidnapped by these white supremacist friends of Eamon's who threaten to blow her up. The cops take out the white trash before Naomi gets whacked, but then Ortiz blows up their trailer remotely and puts Jamie's girlfriend in a coma. It's really serious. Then there's a big shootout between everyone in the film and the cops win, I think. They don't really say. But Colin Farrell puts Gong Lee on a boat so she doesn't get arrested, which is what every good cop would do. And Naomi Harris wakes up. Thank God. The end. Okay, minute and ten. Mm. Ben, let me ask you this. Why did you... You chose this film last time. What made you choose it? Well, in the summertime, I caught up with a good friend of ours, Matt. Um, mm. And we were talking about the movies. And he, he is a big fan of the movies. He enjoys the movies. And we mentioned Miami Vice. And he said to me, because I, I said when I saw it originally, I didn't enjoy it. And he said, well, I think you should watch it again. Because actually, it holds up a lot better than you might remember. So for a while now, we've, we've had it on our list, haven't we? Yeah. And I uh, thought, well, well, let's give it a try. And Matt, you are totally wrong. You are a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've wasted over two hours of my life. <laughs> so, yeah. I basically watched this on my laptop with my headphones in, in our living yeah. room, whilst my wife uh, watched The Banshees of Inner Sheeran. Even though I've seen that film already, we did it on this podcast, I kept stopping Miami Vice <laughs> and taking out my headphones to, 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 to watch Inner Sheeran because it's so much more compelling. A film set in rural Ireland, whereas the budget for Miami Vice was gigantic. It was like 140 million. It was. And I was just thinking, like, where did it all go? There were hurricanes which um, caused a lot of delays. Jamie Foxx had just won an Oscar before they started shooting and his demands for the, upon the filmmakers changed quite significantly. He was asking for private jets everywhere. He wouldn't go in a boat. Yeah. Um, there were some odd things. I'm not sure how much of that is true. Apparently Colin Farrell doesn't remember making the film at all because he was very much in the throes of his addiction, ah. which I think you can tell because his... He sort of bloats throughout the movie and then mm. kind of slims down a bit. And I think also Michael Mann liked to film in places that he really wasn't allowed to go yeah. to, hide a lot of gang members. And it all just sounds a bit like this was, yeah, it was like 150 million, which is... Doesn't look it. You, you don't see it. I watched Heat mm. a couple of weeks ago. That budget was not nowhere near this much. And it looks so much better. It looks incredible. Mm. Great looking film with so many memorable lines. Mm. Like Heat is so quotable. Yeah. I don't remember anything from this film. You don't remember, they call me Gochi Loco. <laughs> no, I don't remember that one. Do you remember that? This was at the the forefront of the switch to digital filmmaking. Yes. And it's a little, I think it was a little too early. Yeah. Because it doesn't look good. The picture quality is not great. I do think it's a good looking movie. I like the look of it. I think the lightning, the skies, you know, it's very Florida. Mm. But I don't feel like the aesthetic fits with the slightly heightened reality. It just tonally, I just don't think it finds its way. It made me laugh because I've been one of the uh, the great joys about my kids' age right now is they're both just about old enough, my, my daughter especially, to appreciate The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. So we've been re-watching The Simpsons. We watched the episode the other day where they're watching a cop show and there's a character called Homer Simpson. And he's a, a TV cop <laughs> who is a millionaire philanthropist playboy who drives a Ferrari. Right. And I was just thinking like... This is what Miami Vice is. Yeah. At no point do they ever go, um, great that you won the lottery and therefore were able to afford this Ferrari. Yeah. Michael Mann, I always think, is like quite a grown up filmmaker. Yeah. So it's just like, you have to tell us why. Because a cop, if they had a load of money, uh, would quit their job because it's, yes. like, it's a tough job. Yeah. <laughs> they would keep it would. doing it. <laughs> yeah. Unless they're like making loads of money from drugs. Yeah. Like, because they're super corrupt. Which may, which may That's be it, that would be quite a good But angle. the other thing is, like, so there's two cops in Miami who notoriously drive around in a black Ferrari and they decide to go undercover. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, the drug cartel 
They like, kept on going like, "Hey, checked out clean, he checked man. Checked out clean, man. Have you seen anyone that could fit that that their description? <sighs> no, no, no one in Miami recognizes them. No, no. everyone in Miami would recognize them. Like yeah. everyone would know, and they fly planes. But that's they, the other thing. It's like there's no kind of like uh, glad I learned to fly a plane when I was in the air yeah. force, and they're like it's military like, levels of boat driving in the dark. Like how? <laughs> so, so where'd you get that from? Yes. Yeah. And this is the kind of stuff that just doesn't make sense with this very kind of gritty, realistic... Exactly. It, exactly. Nah. If this was like bright, colourful, PG-13 type thing, you wouldn't bat an no. eyelid if it was like, I don't know, like Chris Pratt. Yeah. I know you're not a huge fan, but I actually thought at the end, John Woo could have done a better job of this. I would have liked to have seen a proper John Woo shootout at the end. He would have, he would have gone with the melodrama... And it would have looked like it, it still would have been shit. He would have made it worse. <laughs> you should have thrown <laughs> a couple you of birds in there. But I would have. Oh, birds. Oh, it means something. Yeah, it does. Birds, doves. It means it's pretentious. You know what I mean? Doves and guns. Ooh, juxtaposition. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little laugh at the end. I like that. The mise en scene. Um, one thing I thought was, uh, I know when you look at the old reviews, it wasn't well received at the time, but actually there's been a kind of uh, revisionist. Yeah, research. It's just like, why? It's oh. bad. It's not good. Just because it was bad and everyone hated it doesn't exactly. mean you have to like it. Yeah. It sucked. That's that's it. Oh, it's actually a... Uh... No. No, <laughs> no. It felt really pedestrian, the plot. There's no twists or turns. Mm. It kind of felt... Actually, do you know what? This probably would make a reasonable hour long, like cop TV cop drama. Well, it was it was based on a very good episode of Miami Vice. Yeah, they should have just kept it. But but like deliberately trying to confuse us with this just jargon. Like you're thrown in at the beginning with a they're on a raid and then they're not and they're just, oh the transpo mm. blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what also. What made me laugh quite a lot and made made me feel quite dated is it was, um, okay, right, uh, time for a a love scene now to keep the ladies engaged. They're not going to like the the action or the cool guys talking, so I better have a a, a love scene. I thought Jamie Foxx's joke, which we won't go into, that was funny. That was quite good. But the Colin Farrell love scene. Oh, I mean, it was the least believable... When when they parted ways at the end, I was just like, why are you sad? Yeah. You hate each other. There's nothing in this relationship. They had no chemistry, those two It actors. was like ridiculous. It really... Ridiculously bad. And it just went on and on. How did you feel about the chemistry between Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell? It was much worse than I remember it. Yes, it was. I think for some reason I was just like, well, they're in it. So I guess they have got great chemistry, but they don't at all. They didn't really talk to each other no they don't always in a group scenario with them the two of them talking to another person just taking it in turns it would be like if we did this podcast and just talked about like editing time codes <laughs> but one of them had a revolver and the other one had uh, like a pistol oh uh, so that's how they're you know, different that. if you have a pair you've yeah, always got to have <laughs> one's got to have the revolver and one's got to have the pistol both can have a shotgun but you they know. should make it more extreme, shouldn't they? So, like, one should have, like, a mace. Yeah. Yes. And the other should have, like, a musket or something. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. <laughs> See, that I would have enjoyed if, like, yeah, he's off to... Jamie Foxx is off to get his girlfriend back. Or he yeah. pulls just a, like a blunderbuss. Yeah. And he fires it and just obliterates the entire trailer. <laughs> that would have they been don't good. have uh, snipers. They've got, uh, like, a trebuchet. Yes. Load, keep yeah. loading the yeah. trebuchet. Keep, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no. he <laughs> I would have liked that or just, yeah and Colin Farrell just rides in on a horse with a jousting pole I think if they updated this with all medieval weapons which they make no <laughs> reference to it would be significantly better <laughs> I love that I mean it, it gets better I would say from the point at which Naomi Harris is abducted I like the raid on the trailer Again, it was like, oh, let's, let's create some tension because we need yeah. some. Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> yeah. It's gone immediately. It's, um, it, I mean, but still not that tense because I didn't care if she died. No, she was not good. Didn't None care. of the characters were. It's their whole crew. They just stood there. 
That's all they There's did. There's one point, Justin Theroux, who's a really good actor and writer, and yeah. he was he was in White House Plumbers, which it, he's he is great hilarious in. Like, he's not spoken for ages, and then he gets a line which is just like, um, I don't know, it's your call. It's just like, yeah, that's why right. did you put that in? That's literally just like, oh, she would better give Justin and something to say. And he got shot, say. didn't he, at the end, and he rolls, rolls for ages. <laughs> yeah. He just rolls and rolls and rolls. I did. I, I did read that. Apparently, that was like um, he he wrote a much better ending, right? And then because of gang warfare or something, they couldn't shoot there, and so he had to revert to a, a previous ending that they that he'd written, which wasn't as good, and it wasn't very good. It just wasn't very good. It's just mumbly and takes itself so so very seriously. What I loved is like uh, in the absence of like proper storytelling or good acting or development or anything michael mann is just like all right let's let's get all different airplanes in let's just get loads and modes of transport that'll make it better get one with a propeller at the front and the back (laughs) people will love that yeah um colin's gonna be late uh because he's drunk and jamie doesn't want to come to set today but we do have this sweet black ferrari so, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Not a problem. Cool. Get me, uh, get me an airplane that's shaped like a like an egg. <laughs> yeah. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah, that'll make it better. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Action. Uh, but, oh, we've got. We've also got some actual gang members. Um. So let's let's go. Mm-hmm. Oh, I tell you what was good. The best part of the film at the beginning in the car when yeah, yeah <laughs> that was great. Yeah. All those sniper hits on that car and the guy's arm comes yeah, off. Yeah, in slow motion. It was like Robocop. It just shows you, but yeah, it was brilliant because it just shows you like how how powerful and dangerous and crazy and awful those guys are. You know, yeah. Oh, man. But brilliant. you didn't see anything else like that. No, no, that was it. Okay, so Ben, <laughs> would you fish this film out of the toilet? Like Colin Farrell fished his career out of the toilet post this film. Very nice. Or would you flush this film away like Michael Mann flushed all the goodwill he'd built up <laughs> with his previous films uh, before this one with Heat and The Insider <laughs> and Ali? Tossed it all away, didn't he? Mm. Good one, Eamon. Thanks. Oh, I mean, no, I'm not even going to pretend I'd flush it away. Yeah, well, so would I. Okay. I think it's right. Not, so that not means good. Miami Vice goes into the macerating tank of despair. Bye bye. Okay, so that was Miami Vice, and now on to this week's top five. So we're going, we're going to mix it up a little. Mm-hmm. We're going to see if we can guess Colin Farrell's top five highest grossing movies. Mm. So we've both got a, a big old list of his films. Yeah. We've narrowed it down to mm-hmm. seven movies that stood out as having possibly made some money. We now have to get rid of two. So we said The Batman. We know that made a lot of money. Yeah. Banshees of Inner Sharon, just because of all its hype and Oscarness, I feel that would have done quite well. Yeah. Dumbo, Disney. Even a modest hit for, for Disney is like 700 million. So even if it was did average, it still made a lot of money. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Harry Potter I in mean, it. That first one was pretty popular, that was big, I think. Yeah. Now he was in a remake of Fright Night, which I is not necessarily up there with the others, but I think it was fairly well received. I think it was well received, and yeah. Sometimes, you know, these little horror movies can end up making quite a lot, depending on where they're released. Mm-hmm. Minority Report, Spielberg, yeah. that was a big movie, that was right? Good, yeah, like that one. And, well, just because it popped out, SWAT. I don't know if SWAT was that popular. Mm. I feel like it might have been, um, but I might be wrong. So I would say definitely... Batman, definitely Fantastic Beasts, and then probably Minority Report and probably Dumbo. Yeah. So then we've got to, you know, it's like between Banshees, Fright Night, and SWAT. I would I would say out of those three, Banshees. Same. Okay, we have our five. Now we need to see whether there is actually a list <laughs> <laughs> online of the top five highest grossing Colin Farrell films. All right, let's have a look. So highest grossing Colin Farrell film... Mm-hmm. According to this list, was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? 814 mil. Next up? Batman. The Batman. 771 mil. Whew. Then Minority Report. Bit of a drop now. 359 mil. 
pathetic. Rubbish. Then, Dumbe. 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 353 mil. Okay, now we were, we were confident about these. Mm. So, so we've got the one, first four. Which, we have got which the first good. four. Did we get five? Oh. Epic. It was 268 mil. Okay, so it was an animated... Oh, like Ice Age in that. Ah, so we got that wrong. We got four. It was pretty good. Good. It was... It's quite a boring game, but... Uh, when you come up with a game, then, and play it. Well, you want a different game? You didn't have to sit through it. You listened to the edited version. We actually had to do it in real life. Oh, that was boring, that game. Yeah, well, did you suggest a game? Mm-hmm. There we are. Now, I think we're going to take a little break, aren't we? Christmas time's coming. It gets fully ballistic for me at work, etc. Ben works in a uh, turkey-killing abattoir. <laughs> We've got to hack, hack this some This is your turkey. busy, busy time, isn't it? Oh, man. So much squawking and... It's horrible. Morrissey would hate Ben. He kills so many turkeys. He might come after me. Yeah. Killing all the turkeys. And do you, you, you telling me you kill them all different ways, like tombstones. Yeah. <laughs> DDT the turkey, didn't you, one time? Yeah. Which is hard because they got such a thin neck. That's right. But it's you, difficult getting the headline If up. you do it enough times... It works. Well, you told me you did about you can do about twenty at a time. <laughs> you get all their necks under your arm. That's and right. DDT them in one go. Yeah, it's the most. It's the it's the most humane way. I'm told. It is. Yeah. It is humane. It's quick. I mean, other than the putting them under your arm, <laughs> doing twenty like twenty turkeys. DDT. The, go. The build up's not quick. But the death is. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Bands wrestling a turkey. Oh, I just want to say everything like Jim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> like Jim Ross, for Christ's sake. <laughs> um, well, let's thank our Patreons like Jim Ross would. All right, so uh, what about Mike Foster? Stone Cold. Yes. Uh, Raph? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> that is dead on. Your dad. He is tougher than a $2 steak. I love that one. Yeah. And your mum. She's a Jezebel. <laughs> <laughs> she sure is, Jim. That's what he call he calls like evil women Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh. Look at that Jezebel. <laughs> um, yeah. Can we start doing this podcast in, in those ten gallon cowboy hats that he wears? Yeah. Yeah. Love definitely it. we should. When we come yeah. back. Cowboy when hats, we come yeah. back we'll have changed. We'll put on a lot We're of just weight. gonna talk like Jim Ross the whole time. We'll have eaten a lot of barbecue sauce. Oh, that's his thing, isn't it? Yeah, my sister bought me back um, from Vegas a, a bottle of Jim Ross barbecue sauce, and it was delicious. Of course it is. Deli- it he's was a, delicious. He's a connoisseur. He is. He feels... That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? He is. He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> He fills his big gallon hat with a gallon of... Oh, nice. And then gallon. puts it on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it up. I'm covered in <laughs> sauce. Oh, God, I see my eyes, King. <laughs> yeah, it fills it with sauce. That's how he finishes every uh, podcast. Yeah. And now, wrap things up. The hat flip. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a hat full of barbecue sauce. I think we've shown... Eamon, why we both deserve a well earned break. Yeah. But when we come back... <sighs> Better brace yourselves. You best believe it. We're going full right wing. We're coming back like one of those... Uh, <laughs> well, like one of those comedians who goes on Joe Rogan, realises yeah. if I just come insanely right wing and do a podcast, I can make a load of easy money. That's yeah. what we're going to do. If I just start punching down... Yeah, that's the name of the podcast. Like a lot more. Punching down. Punching down. Yeah, each week we in, <laughs> it's we called... invite on like uh, you know like an immigrant trans activist, yeah, someone who we can really just like <laughs> punch down on them, yeah, make some sweet easy money by being bullies. Um, we do it all in the voice of Jim Ross. That's Why don't you so... go back to where you came from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in your pronouns. <laughs> yeah. So uh, look out for Punching Down with Jim Ross uh, coming next year. Oh, man. Excellent. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas, y'all. Have a good break.
I hope you all get a load of cables under your tree. If you've been good, you'll get cables. If you've been good, if you've been bad, you get shot. <laughs> Harsh. Used to be a lump of coal. Now ex- executed. Violent ending to a violent podcast. All right. Bye-bye. Keep flushing. Yeah.